Welcome back to the program. I'm Chris Kenny. I'm joined now from Melbourne by Julian Burnside QC, a well-known refugee or asylum seeker advocate. Uh, thanks for joining us, Julian. Great pleasure. You and I have sparred a bit on Twitter over this issue, but we've never spoken face to face about uh, uh, the asylum seeker issue, border protec protection issue. Uh, you you favour a welcoming attitude to asylum seekers, uh, a less tough approach, the sort of approach that we saw after 2008 when Kevin Rudd dismantled the Pacific solution. I've always favoured strong border protection policies, the sort that we saw end the flow of boats during the Howard years. What makes you so certain that your position is morally superior? <laughs> I don't claim moral superiority, although I do see the asylum seeker thing as essentially a moral question, not a political question. Well, you, you do tend to um, claim I... moral superiority. When you talked about the Howard government solutions, uh, I mean, I could, I could quote any number of speeches or interviews that you've given, but you talked about how uh, this was the Howard government uh, turning its full force on the weakest and most vulnerable people on earth, and they were doing mm. this to placate the comfortable, complacent, xenophobic Australian electorate. I mean, yep. this, this is you telling the rest of the country that your position is much more esteemed and much more moral than those horrible xenophobic people in the suburbs. OK. Um, perhaps I can explain. I think most Australians are pretty good. I think most Australians are pretty good people. You consider the response to the Asian tsunami, for example, and we showed ourselves to be generous and welcoming and Indeed. friendly people. Uh, it's really difficult to square that alongside our uh, approach to uh, asylum seekers, boat people sp specifically, and boat people, remember, 90% of them over the last 15 years have been assessed by us as fair income refugees entitled to our protection. So the question is, how do we get to the position that we've got both major parties trying to outdo each other in being tough and mean and, 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 and brutal to them? Well, well and it what, seems what, to me... Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, this, this doesn't allow uh, compression in 140 characters. Um, the point that has been visible um, since 2001 at least is that the uh, one or other side of politics has made a point of creating a sense of fear in the community about asylum seekers who come by boat. Well, in fact, there's, fear there's, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no fear. sense of fear here. What, what you're talking about is yes, the government is. policies that actually stop the boats. And what, what, no, we, what we saw, uh, Julian Burnside, what we saw in 2007 when Kevin Rudd came into government was that detention centres had been emptied and closed down, that people had stopped drowning at sea, that there were only four people who'd arrived by boats still in detention in this country. So a problem a humanitarian problem had been fixed and you well know that Australia did not take one less refugee because we filled our humanitarian quota from people selected by the Australian government and the UNHCR from refugee camps in Sudan, Syria, Pakistan, wherever they are. Now here's the question. Do you want to lecture me or do you want to hear from me? I want to know your response to that. Why, why, okay. why, it, can I have a, why it was can necessary I have a run to get it, rid of those... Well, yeah, if you could. Okay. Um, first of all, there is a question about whether the Pacific Solution Mark I stopped the boats. One important little factor overlooking is that on the 19th of October 2001, a month or two months after the Pacific Solution Mark I was introduced, the CIVX went down, 353 people drowned, most of them women and children, most of them coming out to join their refugee husbands who were on, in Australia on temporary protection visas. That's the sort of tragedy that goes up the line and tends to deter people. Now, if you doubt that, have a look at Pacific Solution Mark II. That didn't stop the boats. I, in fact, the arrival rate increased after Pacific, Mark II, Pacific Solution Mark II started. So, so you're saying so, it was you know, the sinkings that stopped the, the boats rather than John Howard's laws. But we've, we've, we've no, had a test no, no, of no, no, that no, because when, when Kevin Rudd came in in 2008, he dismantled the Pacific Solution. So we've had a test run at an open borders policy and it's proved disastrous. We've had 45,000 arrivals, well over a thousand deaths and you that's what's forced the Labor Party to look at reintroducing tough policies. Yeah and I, what I wanted to point out to you is that I don't think that the experience of Pacific Solution Mark II compared to Pacific Solution Mark I allows you to be particularly confident about the idea that uh, the, either Pacific Solution was responsible, is responsible for stopping the boats. And you, only, you have to reach that position before you can say that Rudd's dismantling the original Pacific Solution caused boats to start up again. What I would say is this, 
Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, figures for the global movement of refugees over the last 15 years, you'll see that the arrival rate of boat people in Australia tracks parallel to it. It's about people being on the move because of what's going on in their countries rather well, more than people think, oh, well, Australia's yeah. a pretty bonzer place, let's go there. This is now, the, uh, let, this let is me the make push, one other point from where you interrupted me earlier. The point that I, you, you call me morally superior, I do not regard myself as morally superior, but let me explain what I think is the moral thing that's going on, or the immoral thing that's going on. It's this, since 2001, um, the coalition have made a point of demonising boat people, calling them illegals, which is a lie, calling them queue jumpers, which is a lie uh, uh, well, for all practical purposes. Well, and, well, and, well, well, of course, and hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, and talking about the children overboard thing, which turned out to be a lie, and generally speaking, causing the public to fear them, thinking that they are people to be feared. Well, no, and that's I don't think why, anyone, I don't think anyone why, hang on. Burnside, I don't think anyone fears boat people or demonises boat people. I think what they want to do is stop people coming here through on unauthorised boats, and we saw that it worked. Now, I just well, want to... That, no, you, that's you, bullshit, you, Chris. You, that really is I, bullshit. Is let, it, me tell you why, why? let me tell you why that's bullshit. In the late 1970s, we received... Uh, tens of thousands of Indo-Chinese boat people, as you know, yes, as they came look, here look, and didn't, didn't, cause, look, didn't cause any concern. Now, don't interrupt. Uh, they didn't cause any concern <laughs> in the community because both major parties supported it. Yep. Since then, it has become the political norm to demonise them so that they can be mistreated. So you, and let's you, make no you think both let's political no parties are this. using people for political purposes? This gets Absolutely back to my original right. point. So you it think is a race to the bottom. A race to the bottom and, to, and to, you, to you, stir you up a xenophobic vote. You think that people in Australia can have their buttons touched by some sort of xenophobic politics? That's I it, do, that's especially, especially so that's if they have been persuaded you think of your to fellow think... Australians. You must stop interrupting. Well, the, of um, course people... Of you're course having a fair go at yourself. Of course people's xenophobia will be scratched if they are told that they should fear these people. Calling them illegals, calling them criminals, calling them queue jumpers, saying they'll throw their children into the sea is calculated to make people fear them. You know, and Scott you know Morrison very well. is, the, is the prime offender in this. He is trying to make the Australian public fear boat people so that we will vote for the party that says they'll treat them the toughest. Ha has it ever now, crossed you your, ha has it ever crossed your mind, Julian your... Burnside? Ha excuse me, can I just get a word in? Has it ever crossed your mind that the great mainstream of Australian politics can actually see that it makes sense to have a a sound immigration system, a safe immigration system, and that we should take our refugees from the camps where we know who they are and we choose them without outsourcing that responsibility to those who are people smugglers and to the customers who can pay people smugglers. Isn't it common sense rather than xenophobia? I think it's common sense to have a sound immigration policy. I agree with that. Refugee flows and immigration policies are radically different things and I'm very surprised that you mix them up in the same sentence. The point about refugees and the treatment of refugees is this. If someone in distress turns up at your doorstep, the question is, do you treat them brutally so as to frighten other people off from coming or do you treat them decently? I think it is the natural Australian thing to treat them decently, but of course if the government makes you frightened of them, then you'll treat them brutally. That's what's going on in Australia, and that's what I regard as utterly immoral. You make your own judgment of it, but I think treating, treating people brutally who've committed no offence, who've got dreams and fears just as rich as yours or mine, and if those people are escaping terrors that we can scarcely imagine, I think we should treat them decently and not brutally. But uh, as I said, you got your wish with the weaker laws in 2008. We've seen over 1,100 people die at sea since then. And we've seen 45,000 people who come to this country. Now, you object to the term queue jumper, but every one of those who take a place in Australia under our humanitarian program displaces another refugee in a camp somewhere who cannot afford a people smuggler. Because we choose to say, if a boat person turns up, we'll knock one off the offshore resettlement system. That's our choice. So how many, okay. how many now, listen, boat people you... do you think we can accept? What is, wh when you said 5,000 wasn't a problem, now we're getting yeah. 20,000 people a year, you're saying that's not a problem. How many? When does it become a problem? 50,000? Yeah, I, I think that's a really good question, Chris, and I would say... Uh, let's stand back and say, OK, our um, annual migration intake is about 200,000 people, give or take. Uh, so demographically, we can cope with that many. If the boat people numbers got to beyond 50,000 in a year, 
then I would say maybe we need to rethink this and I've got a couple of plans that I reckon would uh, deal with the thing better than we're doing at the moment. Well, um, we'll have to hear about those plans another time. 25,000 a year is not a problem and we've coped with it before. We can cope with it again. Yeah, well, uh, I'll have to disagree with you. I think 25,000 a year is a problem. You're saying it would be a problem at double that. I hope we don't get to find out. But thank you, Gillian Burnside, for at least uh, coming on here and showing the courage of your convictions and uh, debating the issue with me. Thanks, Chris. That was Julian Burnside QC, refugee advocate, as you said, uh, as you heard. He thinks uh, if we had 50,000 people arriving by boat each year, that wouldn't be a problem. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, I'll be back after the break to talk about all the week's issues with a great panel of Peter Frey and Miranda Devine. <laughs>